Takaram, also referred to as Sant Takaram, Bhakta Takaram, Takaram Maharaj, Takoba and Takobaraya, was a 17th-century Hindu poet and sant of the Bhakti movement in Maharashtra, India. He was part of the egalitarian, personalized Varkari devotionalism tradition. Takaram is best known for his devotional poetry called Abhunga and community-oriented worship with spiritual songs known as Kirtans. His poetry was devoted to Vitala or Vithoba, an avatar of Hindu god Vishnu. Biography <inaudible> 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 The year of birth and death of Sant Takaram has been a subject of research and dispute among 20th century scholars. He was either born in the year 1598 or 1608 in a village named Dihu, near Pune in Maharashtra, India. Sant Takaram was born to Kanaka and Bolhoba Ambile, and scholars consider his family to belong to the Kunbi caste. Despite being from a caste traditionally believed to be the laborers and tilling service providers, Takaram's family owned a retailing and money lending business as well as were engaged in agriculture and trade. His parents were devotees of Vithoba, an avatar of Hindu deity Vishnu Vaishnavas. Both his parents died when Takaram was a teenager, Sant Takaram's first wife was Rakama Bai, and they had a son named Santu. However, both his son and wife starved to death in the famine of 1630–1632. The deaths and widespread poverty had a profound effect on Takaram, who became contemplative, meditating on the hills of Sahyadri Range Western Ghats and later wrote he, "...had discussions with my own self." Takaram married again, and his second wife was Avalai Jijabai. He spent most of his later years in devotional worship, community kirtans, group prayers with singing, and composing Abhunga poetry. According to Rod Ranade, Takaram's spiritual teacher was Babaji Chaitanya, who himself was fourth generation disciple of the 13th century scholar Junior Nadiva. In his work of Abhungas, Tukarama repeatedly refers to four other persons who had a primary influence on his spiritual development, namely the earlier Bhakti Sants Namdev, Dnyaneshwar, Kabir, and Eknath. According to some scholars, Takaram met Shivaji, a leader who challenged the Mughal Empire and founded the Maratha Kingdom. Takaram introduced Shivaji to Ramdas for his spiritual education. Their continued interaction is the subject of legends. Eleanor Zelliot states that Bhakti movement poets, including Takaram, were influential in Shivaji's rise to power. Takaram died in 1649 or 1650. Important places associated with Tukaramji in Dihu that exist today are Takaram Maharaj Janm Southern Temple, Dihu, place where Tukaramji was born, around which a temple was built later. Sant Takaram Vikanthstan Temple, Dihu, from where Tukaramji ascended to Vikanth in his mortal form, there is a nice ghat behind this temple along the Indriyani River. Sant Takaram Maharaj Ghata Mandir, Dihu, modern structure, massive building housing, a big statue of Takaram, in the Ghata Temple, about 4,000 abhangs verses created by Takaram Maharaj were carved on the walls. Topic: Literary works. Santa Karam composed Abhunga poetry, a Marathi genre of literature which is metrical, traditionally the Ovi meter, simple, direct, and it fuses folk stories with deeper spiritual themes. Takaram's work is known for informal verses of rapturous abandon in folksy style, composed in vernacular language, in contrast to his predecessors such as Dnyandeva or Namdev, known for combining similar depth of thought with a grace of style. In one of his poems, Takaram self effacingly described himself as a fool, confused, lost, liking solitude because I am wearied of the world, worshipping Vithal Vishnu just like my ancestors were doing but I lack their faith and devotion, and there is nothing holy about me." Takaram Gata is a Marathi language compilation of his works, likely composed between 1632 and 1650. Also called Abhunga Gata, the Indian tradition believes it includes some 4,500 Abhungas, but modern scholars have questioned the authenticity of most of them. 
The poems considered authentic cover a wide range of human emotions and life experiences, some autobiographical, and places them in a spiritual context. He includes a discussion about the conflict between pravriti, having passion for life, family, business, and nivriti, the desire to renounce, leave everything behind for individual liberation, moksha. Ranade states there are four major collations of Takaram's Abhunga Ghatas. Authenticity Numerous inconsistent manuscripts of Takaram Gata are known, and scholars doubt that most of the poems attributed to Takaram are authentic. Of all manuscripts so far discovered, four are most studied and labelled as, the Dihu MS, the Kadusa MS, the Talajan MS and the Pantapomus. Of these, the Dihu MS is most referred to because Indian tradition asserts that it is based on the writing of Takaram's son Mahadeva, but there is no historical evidence that this is true. The first compilation of Takaram poems were published, in modern format, by Indu Prakash Publishers in 1869, subsidised by the British colonial government's Bombay Presidency. The 1869 edition noted some of the as received manuscripts on which the compilation relied had been corrected further corrected and arranged this doctoring and rewriting over about 200 years after takaram's death has raised questions whether modern compilation of takaram's poems faithfully represent what takaram actually thought and said and the historicity of the document the known manuscripts are jumbled, randomly scattered collections, without chronological sequence, and each contains some poems that are not found in all other known manuscripts. Philosophy and practices Early 20th-century scholars on Takaram considered his teachings to be Vedanta-based but lacking a systematic theme. Edwards wrote, Takaram is never systematic in his psychology, his theology, or his theodicy. He oscillates between a devotist and an advaitist view of God and the world, leaning now to a pantheistic scheme of things, now to a distinctly providential, and he does not harmonize them. He says little about cosmogony, and according to him, God realizes himself in the devotion of his worshippers. Likewise, faith is essential to their realization of him, it is our faith that makes thee a god, he says boldly to his Vithoba. Late 20th century scholarship of Takaram, and translations of his Abhunga poem, affirm his pantheistic Vedantic view. Takaram's Abhunga 2877, as translated by Ranade states, for example, The Vedanta has said that the whole universe is filled by God. All sciences have proclaimed that God has filled the whole world. The Puranas have unmistakably taught the universal immanence of God. The Sants have told us that the world is filled by God. Tuka indeed is playing in the world uncontaminated by it like the sun which stands absolutely transcendent. Scholars note the often discussed controversy, particularly among Marathi people, whether Takaram subscribed to the monistic Vedanta philosophy of Adi Shankara. Bandarkar notes that Abhunga 300, 1992 and 2482 attributed to Takaram are in style and philosophy of Adi Shankara. However, scholars also note that other Abhungas attributed to Takaram criticize monism, and favor dualistic Vedanta philosophy of the Indian philosophers Madhvacharya and Ramanuja. In Abhunga 1471, according to Bandaka's translation, Takaram says, When monism is expounded without faith and love, the expounder as well as the hearer are troubled and afflicted. He who calls himself Brahma and goes on in his usual way, should not be spoken to and is a buffoon. The shameless one who speaks heresy in opposition to the Vedas is an object of scorn among holy men. 
The controversy about Takaram's true philosophical positions has been complicated by questions of authenticity of poems attributed to him, discovery of manuscripts with vastly different number of his own poems, and that Takaram did not write the poems himself, they were written down much later, by others from memory. Takaram denounced mechanical rites, rituals, sacrifices, vows, and instead encouraged direct form of bhakti. Devotion. Topic: Kirtan. Takaram encouraged kirtan as a music imbued, community-oriented group singing and dancing form of bhakti. He considered kirtan not just a means to learn about bhakti, but bhakti itself. The greatest merit in kirtan, according to Takaram, is it being not only a spiritual path for the devotee, it helps create a spiritual path for others. Topic: Social reforms. Takaram accepted disciples and devotees without discriminating gender. One of his celebrated devotees was Bahina Bai, a Brahmin woman who faced anger and abuse of her husband when she chose Bhakti Marga and Takaram as her guru. Takaram taught, states Ranade, that pride of caste never made any man holy. The Vedas and Shastras have said that for the service of God, castes do not matter. Castes do not matter, it is God's name that matters. And, an outcast who loves the name of God is verily a Brahmin, in him have tranquility, forbearance, compassion and courage made their home." However, early 20th century scholars questioned whether Takaram himself observed caste when his daughters from his second wife married men of their own caste. Fraser and Edwards, in their 1921 review of Takaram, stated that this is not necessarily so, because people in the West too generally prefer relatives to marry those of their own economic and social strata. David Lorenzen states that the acceptance, efforts, and reform role of Takaram in the Varakari Sampraday follows the diverse caste and gender distributions found in Bhakti movements across India. Takaram, of Shudravana, was one of the nine non Brahmins, of the twenty one considered sant in Varakari Sampraday tradition. The rest include ten Brahmins and two whose caste origins are unknown. Of the twenty one, four women are celebrated as sant, born in two Brahmin and two non Brahmin families. Takaram's effort at social reforms within Varakari Sampraday must be viewed in this historical context and as part of the overall movement, states Lorenzen. Legacy Takaram was a devotee of Vitala or Vithoba, an avatar of god Vishnu, synchronous with Krishna but with regional style and features. Takaram's literary works, along with those of Sants Dnyandev, Namdev and Eknath, states Mohan Lal, are credited to have propelled Varkari tradition into pan-Indian Bhakti literature. According to Richard Eaton, from early 14th century when Maharashtra region came under the rule of the Delhi Sultanate, down to the 17th century, the legacy of Takaram and his poet predecessors gave voice to a deep-rooted collective identity among Marathi speakers. Dilip Chitra summarizes the legacy of Takaram and Bhakti movement sants, during this period of Hindu-Muslim wars, as transforming, "...language of shared religion, and religion a shared language. It is they who helped to bind the Marathas together against the Mughals on the basis not of any religious ideology but of a territorial cultural identity." Mahatma Gandhi, in early 20th century, while under arrest in Yerwada Central Jail by the British colonial government for his nonviolent movement, read and translated Takaram's poetry along with Upanishads, Bhagavad Gita and poems by other Bhakti movement poet sants. <laughs> <laughs> Films and popular literature Sant Takaram 1936 This movie on Takaram was screened open air for a year to packed audiences in Mumbai and numerous rural people would walk very long distances to see it Santa Takaram 1963 in Kannada Sant Takaram 1965 in Hindi 
Back to Takaram 1973 in Telugu Takaram 2012 in Marathatukaram's life was the subject of 68th issue of Amar Chitra Katha India's largest comic book series Government of India issued 100 rupees silver commemorative coin in 2002 Topic <laughs> Books and Translations of Sant Takaram The 18th century biographer Mahi Parti, in his four volume compilation of the lives of many Bhakti movement saints, included Takaram. Mahipati's treatise has been translated by Justin Abbott. A translation of about 3,700 poems from Takaram Gata in English was published, in three volumes, between 1909 and 1915, by Fraser and Marath. In 1922, Fraser and Edwards published his biography and religious ideas incorporating some translations of Takaram's poems, and included a comparison of Takaram's philosophy and theology with those of Christianity. Deluri, in 1956, published a metric French translation of a selection of Takaram's poem along with an introduction to the religious heritage of Takaram Deluri spells him as Tokaram. Aaron Kalatka published, in 1966, six volumes of avant-garde translations of Takaram poems. Ranade has published a critical biography and some selected translation. Dilip Chitra translated writings of Sant Takaram into English in the book titled Says Tuka, for which he was awarded the Sahitya Academy Award in 1994. A selection of poems of Takaram has been translated and published by Daniel Ladinsky. Chandrakant Kalaram Mhatre has translated selected poems of Takaram, published as 100 Poems of Takaram. Topic. See also Bhakti movement Pantapur Wari, the largest annual pilgrimage in Maharashtra that includes a ceremonial palki of Takaram Vithal Temple, Pantapur